Hey, this is Tyler White. Today we're gonna to talk to you about how to build a blanket pack. Let's talk about why you want a blanket pack. Well, knowing how to build a blanket pack is gonna give you a set of specific skills that will help you in the field in other areas. As an example, if you've got a rucksack and your shoulder strap blows out, you will know how to replace it with a shemog right here, or a shawl or a uh, trapper's belt, whatever you've got, even straps, okay? Um, also, knowing how to roll the body of the blanket pack gives you the ability to create packages. As an example, if you're up hunting elk and you've got a frame pack and you wanna be able to, after you've dressed the elk, to process it into a package and then put it in the frame pack properly, this will give you the skill. Now, the other thing that you can do is just go out on the land with just a blanket pack. The value to that is my pack is also my blanket, which is also, looks like a little scorpion looking type spider. My pack, which is also my blanket, and my straps are also warming items to keep me warm at night. So you're not carrying an extra weight. Everything serves multiple purposes. Um, and I really like that. So, first off, I've laid my poncho on the ground. Uh, let's talk just a little bit about a poncho. I think that's one of the most underrated items that can be put in any type of outdoor or survival kit. A poncho will cover you. A poncho will cover you and your gear while you're moving, unlike a jacket. A poncho can turn into a shelter. It can turn into a rain fly for a hammock. It can be just a rain stopper. You can use ponchos for hide sites for the military. They're just super incredibly versatile. You can also use a poncho to load up with material like duff type material, loose debris that you're gonna to take to your shelter. Um, it's just a really, really useful item to have. Okay, so we've laid out the poncho on the ground. Now, when you're folding your blanket pack, the first thing you wanna do is start out with your, with your wool blanket here. and you want to lay it down in thirds, okay? Fold it in thirds. So I've got a couple blankets I like to use. I've got this one, which is my lighter blanket, and then I've got a heavier one, which is a five points blanket, Hudson's Bay five points blanket. But here in the summer right now, it's really hot. So this is the one that I prefer to use because I just don't need that much heat at nighttime. This is about perfect. So I've got my blanket and I'm gonna roll it into thirds. Right here's my halfway mark. So I'm gonna go a little bit past that halfway mark on both sides. The reason that we wanna do this in thirds is because we're gonna make a pocket towards the end. So when I get to that point, it will make a little bit more sense. Get this nice and tight. The more perfectionist you are now, the better it will look and be when you're done. Okay, so now let's talk about some of the items that we're going to put in the blanket pack. Mostly, um, they're food, cooking items, water or water purification, and insulation. At night in the desert, it gets really cold. Even during the day when you've got 100 plus uh, temperatures, at nighttime, Let's say you've got 103 during the day. Let's say it drops down to 80, uh, maybe even 70, which is normally a pretty warm temperature. But if you've been in 103 degree weather all day long, that's gonna feel really cold. Um, I spent some time with the military in the Mojave Desert and during the day, it got 120 plus a couple days and it was 90 degrees at night and I was shivering but my body was still sweating because it's still 90 degrees. So do understand that you want insulation to kind of keep your body regulated at close to whatever your daytime temperature is. So even though it's the desert, um, it can get, it can have really big changes in temperature from day to night. And also in the spring and the fall, it can genuinely get cold. It can bust even, sh even below freezing for a short amount of time at night. You wake up uh, in uh, 
August, September sometimes and have mud puddles with ice on the top of them, which is kind of shocking when it's really hot during the day. So, insulation on the inside. Um, for insulation, I have a little Boreal shirt here. This is just a, a jacket made out of an army. Uh, it's a poncho made out of an army blanket. I love this jacket. I use it all the time. I'll sleep in this thing and then I'll wake up and I'll make my fire and it's like wearing your your sleeping bag so that you don't have to uh, get cold, which is really nice. Next thing I'm gonna grab is this pot. Now, let's talk about that a little bit real quick. I have a single walled clean canteen that can be cooked with and I've got a couple of pots here. Now, I can go out with just this and this gives me, this is 64 milliliters, I think that's two, uh, two liters essentially, so it's, it's like close to half a gallon. And in the desert, you'll spend a lot of time cooking and drinking water if you don't have a large water container. So I'll even bring two of them. I'll put one in my pack, and then I'll have one that I wear on me in a shemog around my waist so that I have access to it, because you don't want to pull your pack apart just to grab water. And then you, it gives you the ability to have more water. You can function with just one of these. Uh, you just end up boiling water at least twice a day just to get a gallon. Or you can add some comfort items if you want to go past the full survival starvation mode into a little more comfortable area. And the way you would do that is adding a pot like this. Now, if I have a pot like this, first off, that's a great storage area. If you've got something you don't want to be crushed, uh, I don't know, maybe you've got some nesting material that you want to keep dry for your, your fire that night. Load that up in this pot, whatever you're going to do, put food in it. Uh, eggs inside of a half cut carton work great inside of here. That way you're not going not gonna to break them. Be sure to boil them so you're not carrying raw eggs. And one thing I've done here is I've added this little wire. I made that at Lowe's. I just went and bought some wire and crimped it together and now I've got a hanging pot that I can put a lid on. And the lid is super important because that keeps ash and debris out of my water. So what I can do here is I can boil water, make a stew, maybe put a uh, squirrel or rabbit in it, put some pine needles uh, in there so I get vitamin C, put other wild edibles, maybe wild onions or something, make my dinner, cook it, drink all of the water from here, then cook and drink all the water from here, then refill it, boil it, uh, let it cool down, put the lid on, and I've got my water for tomorrow. And that is about a gallon of water. So you want to think about a gallon a day, minimum water in the desert. Okay, if you really want to go real cushy living here, throw another little baby pot on the inside. And what this gives you the ability to do is have something like hot chocolate with a, with a soup, right, or a stew. You can mix the two. Maybe you got ramen noodles in bulk inside of this one and hot chocolate and um, uh, condiments in the other one. One thing that's really good to bring if you're living off of fish or rabbits or meat for any duration of time is um, meat seasoning, lemon pepper, salt. Salt's really important in the desert because you're losing a lot of salt. And what you can do is put all of that in this little one, put some food in the, in the big one, and then you have this crush resistant container that can go inside of your blanket pack that'll allow you to eat. Then you just make yourself a spoon or make some chopsticks out of sticks and you'll always have your knife. You can throw utensils in here if you want. Um, I like to think that less is more, the less it weighs, the less I'm carrying. I also like comfort, that's why I have two or three. So we, either I can go out with this or go out with both of these or go out with all three. These are just MSR bag or um, containers. I'm not sponsored by them at all. I bought these containers. So <clears throat> load that back up. Okay, now let's think about weight. When I put this on my back, there's two things I gotta watch out for, weight and comfort. Weight means if I've got a thing of water, I want that right between my shoulder blades. I want that high. I don't want that pounding on the middle of my back. I don't want it digging into my back. You know, if you can imagine that sticking right there. So what I'm gonna do is, as I watch this, this folded over piece is gonna be the bottom. This is gonna be the top. So I wanna stick this right there in the top and put water in it. I wanna do that with right there, okay? 
Um, I'm going to pull the water out for now, but put whatever you want in the blanket pack. This is how you'll pack it. Weight towards the top with cushioned soft stuff against your spine. Super important to do that before you roll everything up, otherwise you're going to have to rebuild the whole thing. Okay, so I've got it in thirds. I'm going to pull this kind of snuggish here. Make sure it wraps kind of tight. I have a little bit of a lip on this side. I want that lip to fold over so that I don't have kit spilling out of my poncho as I go to fold it. Now as I fold this, make that nice and tight on this side. Get this nice and tight, nice snug pack. Okay, now the lady that taught me how to do this, her name was Kirsten. She showed me a little, a little trick. You want to take about the measurement of the pack and leave this extra amount hanging over. It's not quite enough if I do one more roll, so I'm going to undo it by one roll. And this leaves kind of a pocket, okay? This pocket is what I was talking about earlier that you want when you do it in, a, in thirds. And the reason why you want this pocket is because it can kind of loosen up a little bit and grab the entire bag right like that. And this kind of keeps your contents from coming out. So once you've got that all rolled up in your pocket, now it's time to tie the bundle. Okay, so we got a nice tight pack here. Now what we're gonna want is to grab a hold of some 550 cord or some paracord, P cord, depending on where you're from, what you're gonna call it. And what I would do, because you're gonna wanna know what length, right? That's the first question people are gonna ask. So what I would do for length is this. Tie it once with the kit you're gonna carry. Throw an extra three, four, five feet on there, because you can always spool it up and then cut it right there. That's essentially what I've done. And then, normally I leave my knot in the end here because you use the same one every single time, but I need to undo this to show you how to tie it. So we're gonna tie a figure eight knot. All you need is a loop on the end that doesn't slip. If you wanna tie a bow in, I don't care. If you wanna tie a whatever, it doesn't matter to me. I rock climb a lot, so I'm gonna tie a figure eight. The way that we tie a figure eight is this. Shorty length in the right hand, long length in the left. Put them together and we make this little dangly piece here, okay? This is called a bite. A bite is just a little chunk of, chunk of rope. I'm gonna take that bite, I'm gonna go around the back of the tree, in front of the tree, and down back behind into the hole. Squirrel goes around the tree, down the hole. There's my figure eight, okay? Very simple rope to, or not to, to tie. A little side note, the reason why climbers use a figure eight is because it has large bends. Large bends in a rope mean essentially that there's less stress on that rope. And when there's less stress on that rope, it's less likely to break. Now, if you're breaking 550 cord on your blanket pack, you're doing something wrong. But it's always good to know stuff like that. Okay. Now, the first thing that we're going to want to do Wrap this guy around here and start off with our little process. Okay, I'm gonna pull this nice and snug. And now we're gonna want a loop right here that we're gonna use in a little while. Now I can feel this is my soft side, okay? And I want, nope, there is no hard side. So I'm checking to make sure there's no metal digging into my back. Both of these feel good because I put the metal in the center of the pack. So front versus back doesn't ultimately matter at the moment. You also don't want these knots on your spine. So this is going to be the back of the pack when I wear it. But now I need a loop, okay? And that loop I'm going to use when I come around the top. So essentially I just take a little chunk of, a little bite of string, I'm going to pinch this, and I push it through, okay? There's that little bite of string. Now, if you've ever tied a hitch, there's two, I'm sorry, a clove hitch. It's two hitches to make a clove hitch. All you're doing is 
half of a clove hitch. And you're going to take this and spin it and then drop it over the top, okay, and then pull it snug. Try that again. Spin it, drop it over the top, pull it snug. And it's like a knot that holds your little loop, okay. Uh, it's it, it's a, a slippery half hitch and a hitch. The slippery half hitch is just something you can pull on to undo. The hitch is something that you use to hold the slippery half hitch from undoing. Okay, now I'm going to go to the midway of my bag and pull it nice and snug, go around it, and then through. Pull this good and tight, go to the end of my bag, put my thumb on it, go around it, pull it through. Get it nice and snug and tight. Now I'm going to wrap around the bottom and go to the opposite side and continue this. Okay, and all I'm going to do is just wrap it around each each rung so that they don't shift on me. Go to the next one, and I'm just wrapping it around, pulling it through. Go to the next one. Snug it down, wrap it around, keep it good and tight. Oop, I lost it there. Pull it through. And this is the part that's going to go on my back because it's got these little wraps, but it doesn't have the hard knots. Now here we come around the top, and we've finished our pack right here with this little guy, right? And all you're going to do is just tie this off in a knot. I like to pull it tight, and I have a bite again. Now what I'm going to do to that bite is just throw another hitch on it, and I've just got to loop through the old loop. I'm going to twist it to the inside. This is me twisting my right hand in, okay? Twist it to the inside and put that over the top of this thing. While holding it tight with my other hand, I pull it snug, and we're done. Okay, that's the pack. If you want to do an actual clove hitch, just do another one of those twist and drop loops. And that doubles it up twice so that it's going to grip it nice and tight. And it's basically just a loop of string with a couple hitches on it to hold it nice and tight. Now I have that little leftover string. And why do I have leftover string? Well, because string is valuable. I can pull the guts out of this and I have five little baby strings that I can use for all sorts of things from traps to tying shelters down. And if I have more, that's more. So what I, I like to do is to grab it right here with my two little horn fingers, okay, and just go like a figure eight over them. The reason why I do this is because it's easy to just pull it undone when I'm done and not have knots. Now all I'm going to do is just take this little thing right here and wrap it in a knot, okay? And I'm not actually completely done because I'm going to add my poncho to the top. But this is how I would do this. I would wrap and tuck. There's my extra string. Okay, so let's add the top poncho to this pack. Okay, so we got our blanket pack created. Now we're going to add our poncho to it. Let's talk a little bit about poncho prep. I'm most of the time going to use my poncho either as an A-frame or a lean-to or a ground cloth or something other than a poncho, to be honest with you. So what I do is I start out by tying a knot in the hood. Now it's real easy for me to come along and undo this knot if I wanna throw it over my body and use it like an actual poncho. I also add 550 cord to the legs or the corners of each one of my poncho ends so that if I do decide to make this into a shelter, I throw it out real quick, tie it on a tree, tie it on a tree, tie two to the stakes, and I've got an instant shelter in 30, 40 seconds. So a little proper prior planning prevents poor performance in the, in the future. Okay, I also have a little, a little knot tied on the end of this so they don't come loose. So talking about ponchos, um, we're gonna roll this up. There is a center grommet on the ends of these. I like to grab that center grommet because it tells me where the middle is. Okay, use my chin, fold it, fold it again, and then just roll it up. It's like I've done this once or twice. Okay, now that I've got this rolled, I will use these extra strings, just wrap them around. 
and then tuck them. You can tie them in a knot, but then you got to undo the knot. But if you just wrap and tuck, you're good. Now, remember earlier when I took that extra 550 cord? I'm going to stick this right here. Now, if I know that this is the back and this is where my spine goes, then I also know that I don't want this poncho snagging on things as I walk through. If you got some, I don't know, service berry bush that you're walking past and it's got all those really gnarly hooks on it and it grabs your, your poncho, that's a problem. So spin it around, get it slick, aim it backwards, pull out your little string here, okay? And then I will just wrap it, run it through my string in the front. Now this is basically a wide wrap. Go over the center, run it through there again. <clears throat> and then go to the side. Now I got three wraps. I've got three wraps. Tuck that there. Then the last one's going back to the center, to this loop thing we made here earlier. And again, all I'm gonna do is just run a loop underneath. There's a there's a hundred different ways you can do this. I like to run the, the loop underneath and tie the same one we've been using. I can uh, tighten this up. I need to do that before I get going too far, but I tighten this up to make it tight. There we go. Now I do my loop. So with that loop, it's the same one we've been using. I just tuck it underneath. I've got my little loop here. I don't want to make it too long. And I just throw that clove hitch over the top by spinning my right hand out and throwing it over the top. All you're really doing is you're forcing this rope to create friction on the underneath rope. And when that happens, it holds itself. And I like to do it twice because it backs it up. And again, the extra string, we make the little horns. There you go. Uh, go ahead and wrap this, and this is my final one, so I'm going to wrap it, tie it in a little simple knot, and you don't have to actually tie a knot, you can just tuck if you want. I'm going to tie this really good, slam it underneath, and there's the core of our blanket pack. Now we have to have our straps and our pieces for the shoulders, so let's talk a little bit about that. There's a couple different ways you can do this. It's easy to go to an Army, Navy, surplus store, whatever find an army blanket and an army poncho. It's a little bit harder to find the straps. One thing that you can do is go to a rock climbing store and get straps. These are straps from a hammock that I have. So what I can do is I can put my hammock inside of that if I bring it with me and then use these straps as the shoulder straps. What I don't like is that they're thin, okay? Thin straps will pull pretty tightly on you and they kind of tend to wear. I like a little more width, it's more comfortable, especially if you're covering long distances or you're running or moving quick. But this is an excellent option, especially if this is the first time you've ever made a blanket pack. Just find some straps, try not to use string, it'll cut your circulation off. It's like a tourniquet on your shoulder. Um, get something at least a little bit wide. What I do like to use, however, is a shawl or a, uh, this is just a wool one. And this is a woven belt. This is called a, a French trapper's belt. Gives me a couple options. Both of these together, they're six or seven foot each. If you can find a 14 foot one of these, that's perfect. Okay, that's huge, but it's perfect. Um, so what we're gonna do now to add this on here, we know this is the back, this is the front. I'm gonna find the center point of this. Put it right here, okay? Now on this center point, I'm going to run this underneath for the one, one arm. Run this underneath for the other arm. And there's the shoulder part, okay? And essentially it's gonna look like this and tighten it up in the back. All right. Now, if you have one that's long enough, you can tighten it up. You can come around here and tighten a knot. These are not long enough. That's the problem that you tend to run into with this kind of material. So I have two in order to show you how I overcome that. First off, get this about the length of your forearm, and that's how far you need it to be in order to have enough shoulder strap space. I'm going to tuck that and tighten a knot. 
and I like to tie a slip knot so it comes loose later. Or you can tie it in a full knot, whatever you want to do. Okay, so there's my two shoulder pieces. If this is uncomfortable for you, tie it in a slip knot. Last thing that we're going to do is give me some sort of a waist belt to grab a hold of this. All I'm going to do is just tuck this in here. Again, I'm going from the center point outward. Tuck that in there. And now all I have to do is put the pack on. So I put on the pack like this, nice and comfortable, get it where I want it. This leaves me with two shawls here, okay? And I, I try to get this as low as I can so it's not really on my belly. And then I make it snug but not incredibly tight, okay? And I'll just do an overhand knot and a slip knot, okay? That slip knot just holds. And I do this with my, my uh, canteen as well. And it works like this. So if you remember earlier, I talked about putting water in the back. If I want to add water here, this is just a shemog or a versa cloth, depending on what you want to call it. And I've just folded it in half like a triangle and then rolled it down. Now with this lip facing forward, because I don't want it to unravel, I'm gonna snug it up real good. Keep that lip facing forward and then put this above my knife. I really like these dangler knives. This is a Puko from Finland. The dangler knives give me the ability to wear a waist cloth and to wear a jacket and still access the knife. So it just goes right like that. And again, I'm gonna go overhand knot. Get that without grabbing my shirt. And then this little slip knot. I like these slip knots because it helps you to get stuff off quickly. The leftover stuff I will just tuck. Now I have an incredibly comfortable pack that I can go cover distances in. I can jump with this stuff. I can move. I would move that out of the road, okay? It's nice and stable when I shake. If anything's loose, just change the position of your knots, okay? Okay, guys. That is how I will make a blanket pack for going out in the desert. To show you how these slip knots work, okay, all I do is I grab the small end, I'm gonna grab my back hand so I don't lose it, pull on that little string, comes right off, and I have access to water, I have access to something that can continue to prevent the sun from hitting me in the back of the neck, okay? Something that I can use to stay warm with, right however I want to do it and then I can just pop it off real quick as far as popping the blanket pack off super simple again pull on the short one and we're done comes right off and this is something that with a little bit of practice you can assemble very quickly especially if you build it in the morning and take it apart at night you have access to the rain thing right here on top. You just gotta undo two quick knots and pop it out. You have access to a scarf for your neck, a belt, things that you can use at nighttime to stay warm to help you keep nice and toasty. You've got your blanket, all, this, all the type of stuff there. The only thing that I would add to this overall kit is my possibles bag. I'll throw that in the front or inside of my shemog, I will put a hand drill kit, maybe a, a lighter with some uh, uh, inner tube tire, or we call them ranger bands, that I can use in case of pure emergency. And uh, just, you know, salt tabs and very basic things, either in a, in a Apostles bag, in the waist belt, or in the bag, and that's what we go with. All right, guys, hopefully this is valuable to you. I knew it kind of, when, when my friend Kirsten taught me how to do this, it kind of blew my mind. It was really cool, something you can make from stuff you probably already have sitting around in the garage. Um, if it has, leave comments down on the bottom. I'll be monitoring it. Please check out the other videos we have on this channel. They teach all sorts of outdoors, primitive and survival related stuff. And thank you for watching.